dog. What is that thing? That thing's nasty. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the On Roku TV, specifically the 42 inch 1080p version. I did purchase this TV myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this TV or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. We already mentioned the resolution. This features three HDMI inputs, 60 Hertz refresh rate. We have some additional tech specs on the backside right here. DLED display, wireless streaming. We have our Visa mount options. This is a 200 by 100 millimeter mount. This also has all of our connections listed, QR code, a sample of the free road Roku app for iOS and Android devices where you can turn your smartphone into a remote control. And you may notice up here, technically measured diagonally, the screen size is 41. 0.5 inches. Let me show you this side of the box where we have a nice look at all of our connections right here. And we have dimensions for the TV. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here's some of the contents right here. We have our product literature all rolled up from the box. We have our registration card here for our two year warranty with the QR code you can scan to set that up. Next we have our compliance and safety information right here followed by a really helpful quick start guide. So on this side, you'll see what's in the box, how to install the stand, then our remote control settings, connecting devices, and that takes up two pages, set up an activation as well. And on the back side, we have some really helpful customer service and contact info, and then that same QR code to scan to activate the two-year warranty. They include one remote control. The four streaming channels we got in this one are Netflix, Disney+, Plus. Apple TV and HBO Max. They do include two AAA batteries. You'll have to install yourself. We have already done that. You also get a pack of screws. It has four screws and two stand legs. So we already have those installed right there on the bottom. And then lastly, we have the TV itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Here's a look at the TV from the front. At the very bottom, we have the on logo and branding with the power button right here. On this side of the TV, we have the Roku logo and branding. From the top down, you may notice how thick this TV is. So it gets thinner up at the top and thicker right here on the back side. I'll show you the side profile of it as well. Now let's look at the back and all of our different connection options. Front and center on the back, we have our Visa mount. Again, 200 millimeter by 100 millimeter. Additional product information. On the left side, we have our integrated power cord with some cable management built in. On the right side back here, we have a lot of our different connection options. Up at the top, USB, followed by optical audio, coax and antenna right there, three HDMI ports with HDMI 3 supporting ARC. Then we have our headphone jack and a reset button. Down below, we have our video and left and right audio for you legacy users there yellow, white, and red, and nothing else on the bottom. So this does use Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. There is no ethernet jack on this TV in case you're wondering. Here's the first screen you're gonna be at when you plug it in and power it on for the first time. You're gonna choose your language, walk through a couple additional prompts like connecting to the internet, creating a Roku account, and then choosing all the apps that you want to have installed on the TV. But don't worry, if you don't select them all there, you'll be able to come back into the home screen and do that later and browse and find whatever you want. Now, friendly reminder, there are no activation fees. Do not fall for any scams out there. Do not pay to set up or activate this TV. That is not necessary. There will be a step to enter your payment information. That is optional. And that's just if you wanna have a credit card saved to the TV to buy or rent movies or sign up for streaming services. But again, that is optional and that's it. Don't pay anything or fall for any scams out there. All right, our TV set up and ready to go. We're at the home screen here. To the left-hand side, we have all of our menu settings. To the right-hand side for our home screen, we have all of our different streaming channels and options here. That'll change as we change the menu. So next we have what to watch, TVs, movies, and more nice recommended channels. Featured free if you're looking for any free content. You can browse endlessly. Live TV, if you want to stream anything live, there's a couple of free news channels. The Buzz, if you're looking to discover what's hot and new. 
Next, we have a search option, very easy to use to find any movies, TV shows, things like that. Movie store, self-explanatory, TV store, you get the idea. Streaming channels, this is our basically our app store. We can search for channels. We have recommended options and categories right here. We have our own feed where we can save our own you know, preferences, TV shows, things like that. They'll show up here. Then we have all of our device settings. So let's go through that pretty quickly. Network, remotes and devices, theme, accessibility, TV picture settings, TV inputs, audio, parental controls, home screen, payment methods. So if you want to add a payment method to buy or rent movies, here's your Apple AirPlay and HomeKit settings. Very easy to set up and integrate with your TV. Legal notices, privacy, help, and system. Within system, we have some additional settings. Pay attention to a couple of these. You might want to activate or use them later. USB media, control other devices with CEC, depending on the devices that you have, obviously. Language settings, screen mirroring, software update, guest mode. Maybe you're buying this for an Airbnb. You can enable guest mode. And then we have our advanced system settings here where we can do a factory reset any sort of reset or refresh for the TV, that can be done. And then we're back to the beginning there. So that's a brief overview of the menu and system settings. So easy to find whatever you're looking for. Very easy to navigate. I can't stress that enough. And then look at this layout. So easy to customize and find whatever apps you want. So for example, let's go ahead, let's move this channel. We press the star button on the remote control, select move channel. And now we have it right where we want it. Hit OK. There we go. Say now we actually want to delete the channel, press the star button again. We can remove it. And ta-da, there we go. It's that simple. A couple of shortcuts down here too, so we could add additional channels right from our home screen, or we can go down here, search for them. You get the idea. Or go to the streaming channels storefront and find everything there as well. The home screen is going to be your best friend. Very easy to use this TV. Now let's look at how fast and responsive the apps are so you can get a feel for the performance of this TV. Keep in mind, some of this will vary depending on your internet connection, but watch what happens as we open Hulu for the first time. You may notice a loading screen there. That won't be visible the next time we go into the app. But here it is, Hulu loaded very quickly. Let me go back home and show you that again. So we're gonna pull up Hulu. There's no loading screen anymore. That's just basically the first time set up there. And we're right into the app. Let's go ahead, let's try it with, let's just do HBO Max, same thing. It's gonna load for a second. Again, the first time we've ever pulled this app up on this TV. And it's gonna load in. There we go. We'll try that again. No loading screen right into the app because again, I had to initialize it for the very first time. So it'll depend on the app, it'll depend on your internet speeds, but very fast and responsive. And lastly, let's do Prime Video. So same thing, the initial load. And now we're right into Prime Video where we're gonna be prompted to sign in with our account. There we go. Let's go back out and let's open it up one more time again. As you can see, no load screen, and we're off to the races. Now I wanted to show the different picture settings here. So we have ABC News Live streaming on the TV. We're gonna select the settings icon right here. Here's our picture setting options. We can adjust the brightness. So darker, dark, normal, bright, brighter. Get the idea there. Then we have our picture mode settings. So low power, movie, normal, sports, vivid, back to low power. So we'll cycle through one more time. Really changes how everything looks as you'd expect. So make sure you're watching the correct content that you want. So in my case, I like normal. That's my favorite picture setting. We have a couple more features. So you could resize the picture if you needed to. Up to you. I leave it on auto. Dynamic contrast. There's low, there's high. Hard to tell a difference for this particular program. Color temperature, normal, warm, cool. Again, up to you, what you prefer. We can reset the settings, 
we can apply to all inputs. And then we have a fine tune option if you really want to spend some time configuring it however you want to get it perfect. You have all of these different settings you can control and change right there. Just press the little star button on your remote control. This TV has a 60 hertz refresh rate. On the screen right now, we have the UFO test pulled up. This is a free test anybody can use. We have three different FPS values, again, all at 60 hertz, so you can get a feel for the movement in motion on this TV. Just note that 60 hertz is the bottom barrier entry level spec that you'll get on a TV performance wise today. A lot of times you'll find on some of the higher end models and versions, you'll have 120 hertz for the refresh rate. As you may notice, FPS at 15, really sputtering and staggering. 30, same thing, it's not as bad as we've doubled the frame values. Same could be said for 60 FPS, but if you could continue to have a higher refresh rate on your TV and be able to push more FPS from a computer or from um, a console or something along those lines, if you're playing games, you'll appreciate having a higher refresh rate. Will this be good enough for most people, the casual gamer, maybe just an extra TV to game on in your kid's playroom, things like that? Yes, that's not an issue at all. But just keep in mind, there is a benefit to TVs out there that do have 120 hertz for the refresh rate. You will get even smoother gameplay and footage. Now we have a black screen up on the TV at full screen to check for any backlight bleed. It's really hard to tell. The room is fairly dark here. I still have some lights from a couple of the different computers that are running and my sound mixer. It doesn't look bad. There's no glaring issues or anything that's really sticking out to me. I'm gonna look at it from a couple different angles. And again, there's some reflections in the room still. Um, maybe down here a smidge. I can see some right there in the corner where my finger is. So it's definitely most likely gonna be present to some degree, but I wouldn't argue that there's any glaring issues with the TV, especially for the price that you're paying. Now I'm gonna showcase AirPlay for you. So we've selected our TV from our iOS device. Here's the video I want to play. It loaded very quickly. Now let's go ahead and watch it. This is what it's gonna sound like if you're gonna use an iOS device to AirPlay to your Roku TV. This is your sample video to hear how it sounds as well as to see how everything sounds and works. All right, works great, no issues, no lag, sputtering, or anything along those lines. I'm sure someone out there is thinking, hey, can I browse the web with this TV? And unfortunately, Roku doesn't have a native or built-in web browser, but you can get around that by using screen mirroring from like a Chrome browser, Safari, things along those lines. That is something in the future I would love to have with this TV. I do feel like they're missing an opportunity there. It doesn't have to be a full-fledged web browser, but the fact that we have nothing native to at least browse some of the web is something that I feel like this operating system is missing and would be beneficial for users in the future. It's time now to sample the built-in speakers. You've heard some audio earlier on, but we have a song pulled up here. It's called Keep Em Knockin' by Music Chef. Music Chef Here's some of the contents right here. We have our product literature all rolled up from the box. We're we have our registration card we'll here for our two year down, warranty so with the, the range of this TV and its built in speakers. Max volume. So I've heard worse and I've definitely heard better. I'd say this is just what you can expect with TV speaker quality today. It's not a high point of emphasis when you're trying to make a budget friendly TV. And I highly recommend if you're thinking about this TV, um, Roku actually makes their own wireless speaker system that pairs seamlessly with 
any Roku device, that is definitely my top choice to improve your speaker quality and viewing experience overall is to add that particular system, but any sound bar will be a welcomed improvement from what you're getting with the TV that's built in. But is it a deal breaker? Not by any means, in my opinion. Now it's time to test out the input leg on this TV. Currently we're getting 25.5 milliseconds. Let's check that middle box here, 33.6 and the bottom is going to be even higher at 41.7. This is without any special mode turned on. We can actually make a pretty substantial improvement by changing the mode. So if we go down to picture settings, we have this game mode option. We're going to turn it on. We're going to go back and now watch what happens. So look at that 2.7 milliseconds. That's computer monitor territory, almost. Most monitors are around, I'd say, one millisecond or so. But look at that, from the mid to high 20s, all the way down to under three milliseconds right here with game mode turned on. So if you are gonna be gaming with this TV, that's gonna be in your best interest to make sure you have that mode enabled so you can get the best performance possible. Let's take a minute and talk about next-gen consoles. We have a PlayStation 5 plugged in, powered on, and connected to our on Roku TV. Again, this TV is a 1920 by 1080p full HD 60 hertz display. And you guessed it, our video output information for our next-gen consoles, or any console for that matter that supports this spec, that's gonna be what you're capped at. Again, the TV doesn't have 4K, 2K, 120 hertz, or anything like that. So the resolution that it supports that you'll get with your console, whether it's next gen or not, is 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. You didn't think I'd have the PlayStation 5 plugged in and not show you a little bit of gameplay footage right here. So first thing we're gonna do, watch as I move around the battle bus, just try to pay attention to any sort of screen tearing, anything like that. Just keep an eye out for it with the fast movement in motion. Super responsive to the controls and the input. We do have game mode on. Watch as he moves around through the sky, right? We're gonna spin around. Just look critically at the screen, the display, get a feel for everything with the movement and motion. I'm not trying to make you dizzy. Just want you to see in a fast paced game, what you can expect. We're also rocking our 60 FPS, 1080p. No issues at all with the PlayStation 5 as you'd expect to. This console's awesome. What is that thing? Is that turkey? What the heck? Now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to this on Roku TV. This is coming from somebody that's obviously used this TV, but my main TV is the 50 inch 4K version. I've been using that for a couple of years now. I've had zero issues with it whatsoever. I will disclose that TV has one dead pixel. A lot of times you can massage them out. I was not able to get it out. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm never looking at just a black screen, but this one doesn't have any dead pixels. I'm really keen to that and sensitive to it because of my main TV. No dead pixels. I expect the quality to last for years to come as well. It's nice when you have the Roku TV built in because they have minimum specs and operating requirements for Roku TV. So you know internally you're getting good enough parts and components that Roku certifies that it's able to have their operating system. So overall, really easy to navigate, super simple to use, whether you're two years old or a hundred years old, jam-packed full of a lot of great features. This TV itself, my biggest knock would be probably the speakers, but hopefully most of you have some sort of dedicated sound system. And that's usually my knock against any TV 
It's just, you know, there's so many better options out there, but at that point, I'd rather not pay for better speakers, save that money, put it towards something else, since I already have my own Roku wireless speakers, but that's just me. Some might argue that they want 4K. Well, don't worry, there are 4K versions available at around this size, so they have you covered there. Again, just choose what you want or what you need. In my opinion, you really can't beat the price in the value of these on Roku TVs.